grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad. Oh, magnify. Come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The Lord has allowed us to connect together one more time. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. We thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us tonight as we are in the sacred place that we call sanctuary, where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. And we thank God in advance for the things that he is going to do for us. God is good to us. God is good all the time, and God is good. He's good to me. He's good to you. He is good to all of us. We thank you so much for your continued support, your continued prayers, your encouraging words. I want to pause and give a shout out. Um, the Lord has blessed us um, that we actually have some members who are joining our cyber sanctuary. And so we want to give a congratulatory and warm welcome to one of our families from New York, the Scott family. We welcome you all. Welcome the Scott family, also the Lee family as well. They have joined Come on, all busy members. Come on, hit the hand clap. All busy members, hit the hearts. Everybody let them know that they are welcome. Welcome, and if welcome. It's, if it's yes. the pleasure of us as the Vision Say Law family to welcome them into a our family. Let it be known by shouting glory. glory. Shout glory again. Glory. One for the Holy Ghost. Glory. Thank God for the Scott family and the Lee family. And listen, listen. They say they can't wait to get here uh, to Atlanta to, to meet us face to face. But since the Lord has given us these platforms, we just want to make sure that we're spreading the good news of the gospel. Yes. That God is yet on the throne and yes, that he is. he is always in control. Yes. So I want you to make sure that uh, you are liking, liking our uh, Facebook page. Um, some of you don't even know we actually do have a YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel, Vision Selah Church. Make sure that you subscribe, that you like, and that you share. Make sure whenever we're together uh, via Facebook Live, make sure that you like and that you share. I appreciate uh, your comments. It is so, it does my heart well to know that you're with me as we're going through our Bible study. We have a small group in our studio audience. Come on, y'all, make some noise and make it some noise. We're preparing to go back into our in person Bible. Yes. Yes. On tonight, on tonight, there's our prayer. There's our prayer. There's something to say to encourage you for such a time as this. I want to go very quickly to a familiar passage, passage of scripture. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine 
or nakedness of peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are all killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And tonight I want to focus um, on that familiar passage of scripture, but I just want to pull out verse number 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want you to put that in the comments. We are more. We are more than conquerors. What does it mean? What does it mean to be more than conquerors and have victory? I want you to see this in the text. We have victory in everything, in all these things. Romans 8 and 37 tells us that in all things, I want you to hear that, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want you to type that in the comments. I want you to declare that out loud. I need you to get this into your spirit. We have victory in all things. Come on, type that. Somebody should have said hallelujah right through there. We have victory in all things. That not only do we have victory over sin and Satan, but over the world, over afflictions and persecutions in it. But not only we overcome, but we are better off. We are better off. And we are stronger through our struggles. Because what tried to stop me actually made me stronger. Oh God, somebody ought to testify to that. Type that in the comments if you understand what I just said. What tried to stop me actually made me stronger. Yeah. And if you want to live in victory, and I'm pretty sure that there is nobody watching or connected to us right now who does not want to experience victory. But if you want to experience victory, then it's time to start thinking about, listen to what I'm telling you, we have to start thinking about what you are thinking about. You have to start thinking about what you are thinking about. Your mind is one of the most powerful and creative tools that God has given us to shape your reality, influence your life, and make you more than a conqueror. Increased and improved health, happiness, plenty, provision, favor, and victory are only a thought away. It is only a thought away. And I want to first share with you from a couple of different translations of the Bible, Romans 8 and 37. In the Christian Standard Bible, it said, no, in all things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. The Good News Bible says, no, in all things, we have complete victory, glory, through him who loves us. The Message Bible says, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. The New International Reader's Version said, no, in all these things, we do even more than win. We owe it all to Christ yes. who has loved us. Amen. 
the New Living Translation says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. The meaning of more than a conqueror. We are more because we can glory in the struggles and the persecutions because our faith and our joy can increase as a result. Yes. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we already have the victory. Yes. Yes. I said, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we already have the victory. Thank Somebody you. shout it out loud. Somebody type that in the comments. Thank you for the blood. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the blood, but we experience even more victory when God uses our hardships to turn it around for his glory. And here are things I want to talk to you tonight. I want to share with you five ways, five ways you can begin to tap into this type of power uh, of your mind to live like a conqueror. So the first thing I want to tell you is, number one, watch your focus. I want you to type that in the comments. I want this to get down in your spirit because we're talking about being more than conquer. This is how you live victoriously. You must, number one, watch your focus. Why, preacher? Well, because whatever we focus on, we empower. Whatever you focus on is what you give so if we focus on negative things, we empower negativity in our lives. If we focus on selfish and carnal things, we empower our fallen nature. If we murmur and complain and focus on how unfair everything seems to be in a difficult situation, we are not helping to resolve the issue, but instead we are actually empowering more frustration, more anger, more bitterness, more disappointment, and more injustices in our lives. But if we choose to focus on the positivity of the kingdom of the truth, Oh, God, then we empower the love and the light and the life of Jesus to fill us and flow through us. Yes. The Apostle Paul put it this way when he was mentoring the believers in Philippians. Philippians 4 and 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are true, honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, yes. whatsoever things are lovely, yes. whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. Philippians 4 and 8. Think on these things. Yes. And what is incredible about this is that the Apostle Paul, he wrote this while he was in prison. He was locked up in an awful condition, not even sure of if he would live or die. And yet, he wrote again and again about things like joy. He wrote about rejoicing. He wrote about expectation. He wrote about the privilege of walking with Jesus. Yes, yes. He wrote about hope. He wrote about confidence. He wrote about peace. Yes. And near the end of his letter, he shared how this is possible. By choosing, hear this, it's a choice. By choosing what we focus on. 
by deciding what it is that we think about. Yeah. By filling our minds with thoughts that are true, that are honest, that are pure, yes. that are lovely. Things that are good. Mm. Think on these things. Amen. The second thing I want to tell you is that we must let heaven feel our thoughts. We must let heaven feel our thoughts. Let's look at another passage from one of the Apostle Paul's letters written while he was a prisoner. Yeah, he was in jail. And in his epistle to the Colossian church, Paul again talks about the importance of what we allow our mind to be filled with. I'm in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, yes. sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. And it all begins with focusing and agreeing with the truth yes. that we have been raised up by Christ into a new life. We are new creations in Christ. Yes. All things are new. I want you to declare that out loud. I want you to type that in the comments. All things are new. All things. And the old things have passed away. Watch this. Including the old ways of thinking. I want you to type that in the comments. I need to get this in your spirit. A new way of thinking. Come on, type that. A new way of thinking. We are not to allow our mind to be consumed with fear, with doubt, with frustration, with anger, with lack, with depression, with self-pity, yes. with anxiety worrying or anything else that does not line up with the truth that Jesus has fully restored us to a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Yes. And the more we allow our minds and our thoughts to be filled with these truths, the more we will see them manifest in our lives. The truth will set you free. Yes, yes. Glory yes. be to God. I want you to type that in the comments. The truth yes. will set you free. Yes, mm. Somebody should take it off right. I said the truth mm. will set you free. Yes. The third thing I want to tell you is that we must think like a victor, not a victim. You must think like a victor, not a victim. Right. I want you to write that down. You must think like a victor and not a victim. Amen. And in the midst of our challenges, stop allowing our minds to be sidetracked with victim thoughts. Instead, try thinking victorious like, God, I thank you. Yes. I thank you for this battle. But I already know there will be glory. glory. There will be glory, glory after this. You got to start thinking glory. that. Yes. You got to tell yourself, Lord, I know. Yes. I know things are a little bit rough, but I know it's going to work out yes. for yes. the good. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8 that the devil is looking for some victim to devour. Now, I like this translation of this scripture because it makes it clear that it is victims that the enemy devours. And I need you to declare this for yourself because this is going to 
build a head sense of protection around you right now. I want you to shout it out loud. I want you to type it in the comments. I am not a victim. I am not a victim. Glory be to God. I am not a victim. It is not that if the enemy attacks us, then we are victims. But it is that he is seeking people who will take on the role of a victim when he attacks so that he can then devour them. Because the devil's only chance to devour believers is if we stop believing. Right. Oh, God, I, right. I need to rewind it to give that right. to you again. Yes. I said the devil's only chance to devour believers is if we stop believing. Yes. Don't you dare. Yes. Don't you dare stop believing yes. that God is on the throne. Yes. Laying down the truth. Don't you dare lay down the truth that we have the victory, victory. in Jesus. Jesus. And taking up that lie that we are victims because the enemy has attacked us. Yes. But if we think of ourselves as victims, we become victims and the devil opportunity is now to devour you. Mm. Not because he's so mighty but because we have chosen to lay down our power by exchanging our overcomer's identity in Christ for a victim identity mm -hmm. in our circumstances. Yes, yes. But instead, if we choose to fill our minds with the truth, here's the truth, that we are victorious in Jesus who has done all and he has won all. We will see that victory made manifest in our lives. Yes. We already have victory. Yes. I need you to type that in the comments. I need you to shout that out loud. If you're driving in your car, if you're walking through the store, if you're sitting at the table, if you're in your cubicle, if you're in your desk, I need you to shout that out loud. We already have victory. We already have The fourth thing I want to tell you is that you must make up your mind. That's right. Type that in the comments. Make up your mind. Mind. Daniel. Daniel is one of the great champions of the Old Testament. He was besieged. He was captured. He was trafficked. He was persecuted. He was attacked. He was thrown to the lions. He was mocked. And even more. And yet, yet, despite being victimized in a variety of ways, Daniel refused to be a victim. Yes, and I need you to say that out loud. I need you to type that in the comments. We got to stand on the word of God. I refuse, I refuse. to be a victim. I refuse it. I refuse to be a victim. Yes. And we see one of the keys to this in Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8. Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself. Yes. It is right there in the text. Daniel 1 and 8. Daniel made up his mind. He made up his mind not to be defiled by the situation that had been forced on him. He made up his mind not to partake of the things of that place and those people because he knew they were not good for him. He made up his mind not to be a prisoner of bitterness and offense. 
He made up his mind to have power over himself, even if he did not always have power over his circumstance. He made up his mind to have faith in God no matter what. Have faith in God. All things are possible to those who believe. And the way Daniel chose to think about the situations he found himself in made all the difference in his life. Instead of being a victim, he was a victor. He was victorious. Instead of suffering all of his days, he actually prospered and succeeded. He faced many challenges and difficulties. But by always trusting in the goodness of God and in the truth of God's word, Daniel saw the blessings. Yes. He saw the provisions. He saw the protection of the Lord all of his days. Daniel did not let his circumstances influence how he thought about God. Oh, glory. Let me get that to you again. He did not let him, his circumstances influence how he thought about God. Amen. But he let how he thought about God influence his circumstances. Yes. Daniel made up in his mind, and we need to do it as well. Right. My mind is made up. Yes. I want you to type that in the comments. Yes. My mind is My mind. made yes. up. We got to let what we think about God influence our circumstances. What do you know about Jesus? Hmm. Woo. He's all right. He's all right. Thank you. Yes, He's yes. all right. He's Have all you tried right. Jesus? He's all, hmm. right. He's all right. The last thing I want to tell you is that we must allow, we must allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to renovate your mind. Renovate your mind. I want you to type that. Renovate. Renovate your mind. So I hope that you are catching the revelation of the power of your mind. You might also be, as you're listening and watching tonight, you might also be realizing all the times you have let your mind be filled with the wrong thoughts. Yes. Amen. With negative thoughts, with self-defeating thoughts. Right. Or maybe it's it's dawning on you right now that when you have gone through challenging times that your response has too often been to murmur and complain. Right. As oh, opposite to finding something eternally true to focus on. And here's the good news. It can all change for you today. It can change right now. Because Lamentations 3 promises that the Lord's mercies are there for us each and every day. Because God, even now, he's thrilled that you are coming to understand the power of your mind. And God is right here with us to help us start over if we have to. Because if God is helping you see a pattern of wrong thoughts in your past, it is because he loves you and he wants to help you inhabit more completely the fullness of what God has given you. Yes. He wants to empower you to walk in a greater measure of the dominion of authority that you have in him. We have authority through Jesus Christ. Or we got to put in reality simply, he wants to, us to realize that when you change your mind, yes. you can change your reality. Amen. I want you to type that in the comments. When you change your mind, you can change your reality. And somebody needs to say that to themselves out loud. 
If I can change my mind, then I can change my reality. The Apostle Paul said it best in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that word renewing can also be translated as renovation. Renovation. What Paul is letting us know is that it's a key to being more than conquerors and living in the fullness of Christ. It's for us not to think like the world thinks. Instead, we are to allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to help us overhaul our minds so that we think about things from a kingdom perspective. And if you catch yourself having a negative perspective on things, remember that you're undergoing a mental renovation. Mental. Ask God to help you. Ask him to help you catch yourself in your wrong thoughts so that you can take them captive. Cast them down and replace them with victorious kingdom thoughts. Amen. You Amen. are so much more powerful yes. than you realize. Amen. I said you. I'm talking to you. You are way more powerful you are more than a conqueror. Yes, yes. I have power oh. to think right. Yes, oh my. Yes, yes. I have power to think right. Yes. And as we close on tonight, when considering the triumphant life of a believer, yes. oh, glory. Because as believers, we live in victory. Glory. Yes, so yes. when you consider the triumphant life, of a believer, we may wrongly think victory depends upon getting out of impossible situations. But actually, we are already more than conquerors. Yes. Even while we're in the midst of impossibilities, yes, right in the middle of the impossibilities of life, we are already Yes. More yes. than yes. conquerors. Yes. And actually, we have already been made participants in a mighty, eternal, abundant victory. Mm -hmm. The victory that Christ accomplished on the cross mm -hmm. and in his resurrection. We are more than conquerors through him yes. who yes. Loved us. I want you to say that out loud to yourself. I want you to type that in the comments because somebody needs to tell yourself, Jesus loves me. Jesus oh, loves me. me. Somebody needs to get that in that spirit. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves Our victorious position in any situation is not circumstantial, but it is relational. We are united by faith. To the victorious one. Who is that? His name is Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory. Through our Lord. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I want you to type that in the comments again. We have. We have. We have victory. victory. Come on. Say that out loud again. We have. We have. we have victory. We have victory. One more time for the Holy Ghost. We have. We have. We have victory. We have victory. Glory be to God. Yes. Yes. Come on, clap your hands on that right there. Yes. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you for the constant provision of victory through your triumphant Son, Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to view victory as a relational matter and not as a circumstantial. Lord, help us to overcome the things that upset us and sometimes make us anxious. Grant us the will and the strength to fight the good fight. 
to stand up to our adversaries, and yet never to lose the common touch and the capacity to love. Grant us the eternal drive to fight until we have overcome those things that bother us. And I thank you, God, that through Jesus, I am already more than a conqueror right now in the midst of my present impossibilities. And God, we thank you in advance for the things that you're getting ready to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart shout, Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the things that he has done. God has done great things for us, and he keeps on doing great things. I want to let you know that this Sunday is the first Sunday of May's Communion Sunday. We'll be communing this Sunday. Um, Join us back here on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. And if you're comfortable with it, we're right here. We welcome you into the sacred place that we call sanctuary. It is our prayer that something was said on tonight that would empower you for such a time as this. To let you know that in spite of your circumstances, in spite of your situations, we are more than conquerors. And we already have victory. My name, my name is Victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Thank you. It is our prayer. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are yet absent one from another. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord to those who are called according to his purpose. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask, think, dream, or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. And remember, remember that when God is glorified, the enemy becomes horrified because somebody will be sanctified. Yes. And if the Lord delay is coming, we'll see you Sunday morning. And until that time, let the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. It is our own.